Robert with Fiddleback Outpost. This is the Arlo buttstock cover specifically for your shotgun. This shotgun in particular is a Winchester SXP in 12 gauge, but what I'm going to show you about putting on a buttstock cover holds true whether you have a Winchester, a Remington, Stoger coach gun, uh, Benelli, CZ, you name it. If you've got a shotgun in 12, 16, or 20 gauge, this is the buttstock cover that you have been looking for and I'm going to show you how to go about putting it on. Now this is assuming of course that you have a straight comb stock and not a Monte Carlo style stock or anything with a drop shoulder. Uh, you need a straight comb stock like this one for it to install correctly. Okay so obviously when I first brought this bad boy out you probably noticed that the receiver is open. I have it in the back position. Uh, of course I did that so that I could check inside make sure that there were no active live rounds inside and that the magazine tube itself was empty as well. I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time just to be sure and I'm also going to leave the receiver open just to be on the safe side. All right just a reminder taking the laces off it's going to make your life a whole lot easier because that way you can just put the buttstock cover on like you would a saddle on a horse and your life is going to be a lot easier than trying to slide that thing on from one one end or the other with the laces still in place so now that we've got the bus stock cover just kind of in place obviously we need to flip this bad boy over so that we can start to work on it so these are designed so that you've got a little bit of the butt stock showing right in front of the recoil pad you can move that back if you want to just cover all the wood back here um, but it is designed to sit just slightly in front and show a little bit of that wood so you don't lose all of that visual appeal and this okay. is actually easier if you're standing like on this side facing down you know looking at the buttstock like that um, it's hard for me to do that on camera and you can actually see what I'm doing now let's talk about lace direction a little bit um, may not matter it's personal preference I like to start from the inside and I'll go over why as we get started all right, so you can see I've got it through this first set of holes right here from the inside going to the outside. And you wanna do just like a brand new pair of shoes. You wanna just make sure that lace is roughly even once you're that way. And you'll double check it after a couple of laces. Uh, like I said, I like to go from the inside out. One reason is, is right at the beginning, you can see that that lace is going to be touching the stock uh, from the very first hole. I think that's important because it helps create the friction that you're going to need to keep the buttstock cover from wanting to slide forward to the more narrow part of the stock, which it will want to do just naturally. So the more friction you apply from the start of the lacing process, the more it's going to hold where you want it to be during the entire lacing process. I'm always going to go from whatever lace starts on this side with the ammo loops into the other side first, and then the other lace will go over the top of that. That way it's uniform and the same all the way through. Again, that's just me being OCD. And also, I'm gonna be a little bit OCD about making sure uh, the laces are square and not twisted as I lace them through. It just looks cleaner in the end. So uh, you can also go back and kind of twist them as you tighten them to get yours looking quite right. Now, I don't wanna go up too far before I start the tightening process. You wanna do maybe two or three holes worth uh, and then really go back and cinch it down as you're going, but also making sure that your position is still correct as well. And then as you're cinching down, once you pull it super tight uh, through a set of holes, just take your other hand and kind of crab pinch at those holes and hold it in place. And that'll make sure that your tightness you just created don't, doesn't back out. Now you'll also notice too, as you're pulling really tightly, uh, that these holes will elongate uh, from their perfectly round shape and the leather will start to bend and distort a little bit around the laces. You want that. You want the laces to distort and, and kind of mold themselves uh, to the leather and you want the leather to do the same to the laces. That's gonna keep everything nice and tight. And when you're done, it looks super clean, looks great, and it will hold super tight, which is what we want. And also make sure you're pulling the lace that's on the bottom against the stock first. That way when you pull the next lace, it really just locks down on the top of it. It's a little easier to hold everything tight at that point and just keep on going. All right, so again, now I'm at the end, I'm just gonna go through and pull everything tight again, just like before. All right, so I've got it what I think is tight all the way to the end, but just to be sure, I'm gonna go through and just pull these tight one last time all the way up, holding it as I go. Uh, if you don't have a lot of strength in your fingers, uh, you can also use needle nose pliers or a small jaw plier. 
um, to grab the laces and pull them tight as you go. Uh, like I said, you're gonna pull these pretty hard and pretty tight, probably more than you would expect. Uh, just keep in mind, if you do happen to break a lace, no problem, we'll take care of it. Uh, but more than likely, if you've made it this far tugging on it and you haven't broke a lace, you're probably not going to. So uh, feel free to really tug on that. You want as much friction on these laces down the stock uh, as you can, and you also want it pulling tight, tightly enough that this entire stock cover is really molded to that stock. Uh, you want everything on this to have contact area to keep it from sliding forward. You need contact area and friction, so it needs to be super snug and tight in order to do so. All right, I did manage to get a little bit more out of it, so that's good. Uh, now it's just time to tie a knot, and I'm going to do just a basic square knot. Now, some people uh, like to get a little fancy with this, or you know, tie a bow knot, or whatever whatever your style is. Um, I like a simple square knot because it's super tight. It doesn't come undone and it leaves the laces uh, nice and long and loose, which I think looks good. Um, so basically to do that, I'm just going to start just like you would when you're tying your shoe. Uh, you're going to cross one over the other and whichever one's on top is going to slide under and through. And you just pull it to cinch it tight. Now, whichever one that you laid over the top before. So this last time I laid, I laid them like that uh, with this one going over the top. Uh, this time I'm going to do the opposite. So this time this one's going to be over the top and go through and it really locks down each one of those loops created locks down on the strand on the other side and vice versa and that knot isn't going anywhere. It will absolutely stay locked down forever until you tug on it to undo it the opposite way. Uh, now you can add if you want some decorative beads or something on here you can do that. If you want to cut a little bit of this lace off, you can do that as well. I like to leave them nice and long. I just think it looks good, but you can tell everything is very cleanly laced, very, very tight. Uh, you can see the holes uh, stretching out just a little bit there uh, as they're supposed to do and everything molding together and everything's good to go. Next up on this bad boy is just adding some ammo to the ammo loops. Now, obviously, if you got a model with a cheek riser, which you can do on the shotguns, uh, mostly if you were maybe running a red dot on something, I uh, needed a little higher cheek weld to get your sight picture in immediately as soon as you raised your shotgun up. Uh, that does not affect the installation process at all, other than just making sure this is super tight because you have yet another thing flexing against that leather, not wanting it to conform. Uh, so you need to convince it with those laces, but that's really the only uh, caveat as far as having a cheek riser. Obviously, if you have a pocket here instead of ammo loops, that has no effect on installation whatsoever. So that's basically it. We've got our buttstock cover from Arlo Custom Leather, put on our shotgun, our Winchester SXP, and uh, I'm ready to go shoot, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. And if you need more information about the Arlo buttstock cover, check out our other video that we did. Uh, for an overview of the product goes into a little bit more detail about some of the options that you can choose But I hope you found this video helpful and uh, let us know if you have any questions at all Just hit us on the contact page on the website fiddlebackoutpost.com. Thanks